Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. This is Binsu. So now today what we are going to do is we are basically going to understand how you can do step bar analysis in ANSYS workbench. Okay. Uh, so what I will do first, I will just load the static structural cell. So under analysis system, select the static structural cell. Double click on it. So now let us see what is the problem that is given to us. So this is the problem given to us. So we have two different materials. So first thing what I will do, I will create these two materials. So we have only given the material properties that is the Young's modulus. So let us first create these two materials. I will double click on engineering data. I will in this select click on new material. I will write the name as custom material. The name of the new material press enter I'll go to isotropic elasticity double click on it so it is 200 GPA that means it is going to be it's going to be 2 into 10 raised to 5 so 10 raised to 5 you write as E5 in ANSYS poisons ratio I'm keeping it as 0.3 okay so we have added one material with the material properties that is the Young's modulus taken as the 200 GP. Similarly, we will create the second material property that is the Young's modulus of 170 GPA. So what I will do, I will select here, select on click here to add material. I will write the name of the second material as custom material 1. Again under linear elasticity click on isotropic elasticity and model as you change it to megapascal so this is 1.7 e5 and then poison ratio we are keeping it as 0.3 so we have created both the materials as per the given problem now what i will do i will right click on geometry select the second option that is a new design modular geometry so step bar analysis actually it's a 1D analysis that we are going to do in ANSYS. We will create a 1D geometry and we will assign the cross section with respect to the area that is given to us in the problem. Okay so yeah so now let us go. Now what I will do first what is given to us. So all the units and millimeters if you check here. I will go to unit change it to millimeters. I will select my XY plane, click on sketch, select uh, look at face so that the sketch becomes normal for me. I will go to sketching, click on line. So first line starting from this origin point. The moment you see the edge symbol here it basically means the line is horizontal. This is the first line I will make the second line also. Okay. Now what I will do, I will go to dimensions. View dimensions to it. So we have your two different letters, right? So now we will view dimensions with respect to what is given to us. So the first structure is having a length of 150 and second structure is having a length of 200. So under details of view, I will go to dimensions. H1 is 150. So this is going to be 150 and the second dimension is going to be 200. I'll click on fit to screen so that I can see what actually has happened. And now after this what I am going to do is, now we have made the two line entities right. Now we have to convert them into models. So if I click on modeling you see that it is showing as 0, 5, 0 bodies. So now I need to create a two bodies with reference to this line. So what I am going to do, I am going to go to concept, click on line from points. So for my first line, the points will be this, press control and second descent and select the second point. Click on apply material, so you see line 1 is basically generated. Similarly, I will go to concept, line from points, select this, press control, click on apply. Make sure you make this as add closer. Solely then it will convert into two different line models. Okay, so we have line one, line. 
Now what we will do here, we are having two parts, two bodies. Actually, it has to come under one part with two bodies. So to do that, we will right click here. Yeah, uh, just a minute here. So we have got this two. Okay. So I will select this and I will, yeah, first what I will do, we will just go to cross section. We have to give the cross sections over here also. So let us first select this two, line body and line body and then right click. I will click here as form new part. So what I am going to do is, instead of keeping it as two parts and two bodies, I am going to keep both the bodies under a single part. Okay, so that is what we have done. So now you got here one part, two bodies. Now we have to assign the cross sections. For that, what we have to do, go to concept, cross section. Cross section is a square. We don't have a direct square option here. So click on rectangular. So here are the dimensions. So the first the geometry is having a dimension of 30 by 30. So we'll write here 30. And here I will write it as 30. Similarly, I will go to concept, cross section, rectangle. Now, the second is having dimension of 60. We will write here as 60. After giving both the cross sections, I have come to line body. So, cross section not selected is coming. So, for the first line, the cross section is 30 by 30, that is rectangle 1. For second line, the cross section is 60 by 60, that is rectangle 2. I click on generate. Now, if you see, even though we have assigned the cross sections, but it's not visible, right? So, what we can do, click go to view and I will click on cross section solids. So, you can see the cross section. Okay. I will go to file, close the design modeler. Double click on model cell. Now, in the model cell, we will apply the boundary conditions. So, what are the boundary conditions? The boundary condition is one end is fixed. And at the other end, we are basically applying an actual load of 20 kilometers. And we also have to apply the material properties that we have just created. That is custom material and custom material 1 for both the bodies. So, you will do all these things under the mechanical cell. So, let us just wait for some time till it completely loads all the geometries. Now it has loaded. So just click on the maximize screen here. So first I will expand the geometry tab here. Expand the part line body. I will assign this material as the custom material. Line body second I will assign this material as custom material 1. So line body first is custom material, second is custom material 1. Now what I am going to do, I will select static structural and apply the loads. What are the loads uh, boundary conditions? We have this edge as fixed. I will apply this and we have a force on this side to select this vertex. Apply. So I will go for components. The force is acting towards the x axis. So x axis we are having 20 E3 that is 20 into 10 raised to 3 newtons. And then I will right click on structural. Yeah, uh, just uh, scroll down here. Yeah, right click on solution, insert deformation. Uh, so directional deformation that is the actual deformation that we are going to check. Then what we need to check is the stress, stress in each of the elements. So for that click on solution, I will be going to toolbox and I will select beam tool. So the beam tool that basically means what is the stress for which element I am trying to apply. So right now it is saying all line bodies, we don't want all line bodies, we are having two different line bodies. So select this, I will select the first element here, click on apply, okay. Similarly, I will go to solution, toolbox, beam tool. Now again select this and apply the second line. So we need to also find this stress at the second element. Ok, 
okay so we have got deformation and distress i will just solve this Okay, so its solution has been solved. Let us see the deformation. Uh, now, actually, you know, it's not visible here. Like we are not getting the geometry over here. Uh, what I will do is I will go to. Yeah, I will go to solution. And we are not here. Go to display thickness. So activate this thick shells and beam so that you can see the cross section. Now we will see the deformation. Okay. So if you see we have already numerically calculated the answers. So U2 and U3. So what is U2 and U3? U2 is the deformation at this location and U3 is the deformation at this location. U1 is 0. Why? Because it is fixed. So let us see what we are getting here. So what I can do is I can use the probe here. I will go to solutions. Back to deformation result probe. So I can see what is the value coming as here. So we are getting it as 1.66 into 10 raised to minus 2, and here it's anyway visible that is 0 0.23 into 10 raised to 0.023. Okay, so what are the answers? U3 we are getting it as 0 0.023. Here we are getting it as 0 0.023. Whereas the deformation at this is 1.66 into 10 raised to minus 2. Okay, so we are getting almost same. Here we are getting it as 0 0.0167 and we are getting it as 0 0.016. Let us go to the beam tool and let us see the direct stress. So first element, the stress we are getting it as 22.22 megapascal. So here also we are getting it as 22.22 megapascal. Second stress that we are getting that is active expand the beam tool to so here we are getting it as 5.556 we are getting it as 5.56 megapascal okay so we have understood the, how to determine the deformation and the elemental stresses for a step bar so you can also animate this and you can basically see how you know they are actually looking like. You can see the stress and the deformation, how it is going. I can also see the undeformed wire frame. So I will go to edges, no wire frame, and show the undeformed wire frame. So this gives you a better idea. Right? So now you can understand what is the deformation taking place. Okay, so I hope so this is clear. Now you can do a step bar analysis in ANSYS workbench. We hope so you understood how to do the analysis. So kindly send your valuable feedbacks in the comment session. Thank you for watching my video.